Hi, Stu Bamey coming to you from Polly's Island, South Carolina. And I have a question for you. If you've ever felt on the outside looking in, in the darkness, I have a message for you this Christmas season. God gives hope in the darkness, in troubled times. On Christmas Eve, think about it, our whole world this Christmas Eve will come to a screeching halt. Stores will close early, houses will be decorated, families will gather. We will exchange a record $1 trillion worth of gifts, all because of the birth of a baby born in Bethlehem in Judea 2,000 years ago. I mean, isn't it amazing that an event that took place so long ago could have such a dramatic impact on our modern day world? And the older I get, the more I realize at the Christmas season that life doesn't always turn out the way I'd planned or hoped. That's why I love the story of the shepherds. They tell me that God gives me hope in the darkness in troubled times. And I want to share that message with you. Luke writes in chapter 2, verse 8 of his gospel, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Luke introduces to us three visitors to the birth of Jesus, surrounding the birth of Jesus. The first is a group of people that we believe Luke possibly interviewed later on in their lives when they were old men. Eyewitnesses to the birth of Jesus. Shepherds. Shepherds. The very lowest class of people. Absolute nobodies. The bottom of the food chain. Shepherds. Unskilled uneducated Palestinian Jews, marketplace rejects. They couldn't qualify for a real job. They were forbidden to worship in the temple or from even giving testimony in a court of law because their word was considered so unreliable and untrustworthy that it was of little or no value. Imagine of all the people God could invite to the birth of his son at the very top of his invitation list were shepherds. Minimum wage hired hands living outside the city limits responsible for tending the flocks of the rich and the famous of Bethlehem. Shepherds. 12 to 14 year old weather beaten dirty dusty kids camping out in the open fields watching sheep. Shepherds, the very lowest class of people. They had no place in the heart of the city, no place in the church, and people thought no place in the heart of God. Shepherds, those on the outside looking in. Luke continues, chapter 2, verse 9. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. So there were shepherds, the very lowest class of people, and there was an angel, the very highest glory. All of a sudden, an angel shows up. It is Gabriel, the angel of good news. When we picture Gabriel, he has a trumpet in his hand. He heralds good news. It's not a group of angels, a bunch of angels, tons of angels. It's an angel, Gabriel. He shows up surrounded by by blinding, brilliant, indescribable light. What is this light? It's the glory of God. In the Greek, the doxis. We get our word doxology, worthy of highest praise and honor above all else. You see, when God is present, he brings hope in the darkness. There is this intense, unmistakable, dazzling light. It is the presence of God. We also call it the Shekinah glory in the Hebrew, the kavod, the presence of God in his totality, in everything that God is. And in the Bible, when God shows up in his totality, we see that the Bible contrasts light from darkness. We weren't made to live in the dark. We're afraid of the dark. We're the only animal that is afraid of the dark. Your dog and my dog, they're not afraid of the dark. But we're afraid of the dark. And, and the Bible tells us, catch this, that the further we get away from God, the darker it gets, like the scapegoat in the Old Testament. But the good news is, the euangelion, the good news is that the closer to God we get, the greater the light. So God is very, very, very close at this moment. Here we have 
shepherd boys, huddled in the cold night air, surrounded by the darkness, a smoky campfire is burning to give them some kind of light. It's the end of another day. They're telling jokes. They're drinking cheap wine. And all of a sudden, this angel, Gabriel, shows up. And when Gabriel shows up, all the glory of heaven breaks forth. The very lowest class of people find themselves in the presence of the highest glory. There's light all around. And they're terrified. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Think of it. There's shepherds, the very lowest class of people, an angel, the very highest glory of God, and a Savior, the lowest class, the highest glory, and now the greatest good. The word that comes from the angel is a word to calm them. Fear not. I mean, fear is our normal response to life itself. And the angel says, okay, I get that. Fear not's used over and over and over and over again in the Bible, especially in the New Testament. It's okay. It's going to be okay. I have good news for you. Don't we need good news in the middle of our troubled times these days? I mean, you name it, internationally, in our country, in the soul of our country, in our own lives, don't we need good news, you on Galeon? The great truth, the angel says, the great good news. What is this good news? That unto you, did you notice that word you? You know who you is? That's you and me. You, 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 you. For unto you, this baby is born. This is your baby, your Lord, your King, your Savior. Think about it. At the very moment of the birth of Jesus, Jesus is exchanging, the Son of God is exchanging all of the majesty of heaven for the dust and the dirt of a stable to become one of us, to enter our world, Emmanuel, God with us, God come to be known, to be touched, to be seen. God has come for you and me. The lowest class, the highest glory, the greatest good. Shepherds, an angel, a savior. This is the good hope in troubled times. God has sent a savior, a son, to reconcile wandering hearts, your heart and mine, to the love of God. So that no one would ever feel on the outside in the darkness looking in again. Unto you, unto you, unto you. Your name, my name, is on God's invitation list. Some of us can relate to those words on the outside looking in, living our lives in the darkness. I've noticed over the years that during the Christmas season, people tend to quietly divide into one of two groups. Now, the first group gets exceedingly, increasingly excited about Christmas. The family gathers, there's the Christmas dinner, they sing carols, there's a gift exchange. Christmas is as good as it gets. Conversely, there's another group asking the question, how in God's name am I going to find the strength to make it through this Christmas season? I can't wait for it to be over. Christmas reminds me of what I don't have in my life. Psychologists tell us that Christmas tends to be an intensifier of human emotions. If I'm feeling good, Christmas tends to make me feel even better. But the opposite is true as well. If I'm feeling loss, Christmas tends to magnify those feelings exponentially. I feel an even greater sense of loss or aloneness or emptiness. I feel like I'm on the outside looking in, living in darkness. Maybe you look around and you see that family, that mom, that dad, that kid. The house is all decorated. Everything looks so good. And you're thinking, that's not my experience. 
This is the first Christmas since my divorce. Or that financial black hole hit me this year and I can't find any way out. Or I've got this horrible, awful, unexpected, heart-rendering medical problem that invaded my life. I'm terrified. I don't know what to do. Or there's been a betrayal in your life. Or, or, or maybe that kid, that kid, parents, that kid is estranged from us. We're, we're the prodigal father and mother waiting for the child to return, not coming home this Christmas. I mean, sometimes life can get real hard. Sometimes life brings us what we don't expect. And we wonder, in the middle of all of that, where is God in all of this? Maybe you're coming into the Christmas season already exhausted. I know that for some, Christmas is about as hard as it gets. I want you to know that it's in the middle of those kinds of feelings that the Christmas message lights up the night sky, the darkness. The shepherds are a permanent reminder to you and to me that God has been on a crusade since the beginning of history to convince people like you and me that he loves us, he cares about us, he came for us, just like he did for some discarded shepherds 2,000 years ago in the fields of Bethlehem. But there is more. As great a miracle as it is that God would leave the majesty of heaven for the dirt and dust of a stable, the greatest miracle is that he is still ready, willing, and able to enter into a personal relationship with you and me. There is light. There is hope in the darkness. We are not alone. I remember one Christmas Eve, we were doing a candlelight service and we had thousands of people coming to the church. I would look out and all the candles would be lit and people would be crying. We would be singing Silent Night. It was a holy moment, a special moment. I got to go through that with thousands of people on Christmas Eve. One year after one of the services, a woman came up to me and said, you don't know me. I was here last year with my son, Bill. Bill lives in Texas. He came home to see me. He was dying of AIDS. He didn't believe in God. But I, I invited him to come to church. He, he came from Texas just to be with me and to say goodbye. I invited him to come to church. I remember when we lit the candles and we were singing Silent Night. And, and, and when we got home that evening, he told me that he asked Jesus into his life at that moment. The glory of heaven broke forth in the darkness. He went home. As he was dying, he called me. I, I went to be with him. He died of that terrible disease. Later, I was cleaning up his apartment. And I find a Bible, a Bible next to his bed. And in it was the paper candle holder from the Christmas Eve service that protected the wax from the candles from hitting our hands. He held that candle. He had that candle holder and he put it in his Bible next to the story of the shepherds. I'm so thankful that he did not die alone, that he was not living his life in the last few moments of this life in the darkness. He knew Jesus and the moment he closed his eyes in this world, he was immediately looking into the eyes of Jesus into the next world. His mother told me he was not living on the outside looking in any longer. He was not living in the darkness. He was living in the wonder of the light, of the glory, of the miracle of the incarnation of God come to us, Emmanuel. This is the wonder of Christmas. It is God's attempt to tell any and all who listen that no matter who you are, or where you find yourself, or whatever the status of your life, whatever kind of darkness you find yourself in this very moment, God wants to be near and close to you this very moment. It's a holy moment. It's a moment when God tells us of the wonder of his love. And so maybe this Christmas, you can open your heart and say, you mean all of this is for me? Yeah, for you and me, unto us you and me. Is it any wonder in the light of such great glorious news that one time a year the whole world would come to a screeching halt 
to celebrate the birth of a baby. Shepherds, angels, a savior. Some of us have heard those words Christmas after Christmas after Christmas and never known them. Never been touched by the wonder of his love. Process intellectually, nice story about nice people, a nice man, some nice folklore. I enjoy the time off, but the season comes and the season goes, and our lives are left untouched. Spinning in the same religious circles next year that we are this Christmas. Yet maybe, 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 you can imagine it's Christmas Eve, and the presents have been opened and The wrapping paper has been bagged and the dishes have been washed and the kids are in bed and the fire's out. And I would ask you, what do you remember most about Christmas this year? A holiday or a holy day? The lowest class, the highest glory, the greatest good. This is the moment when maybe this Christmas can be different, not just a nice story about some nice things, but it can be the Christmas where heaven touched earth and your life and mine, where God brings us hope in the darkness. And maybe you can say this Christmas, yes, dear Lord Jesus, I receive you into my life. I move from darkness into light. I start that relationship and wherever it takes me, I will follow, I will listen, I will be with you. And I give you thanks that you came to be with me, the miracle of the incarnation, Emmanuel, God with you and me.